Can you see me or hear me? Oh, uh, Catherine, you're okay. Yeah. There's Jerry. Okay, we've got a quorum. We got a bunch of quorums, so we'll get started. Welcome. Let's bring this meeting to order. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of folks here, some who are new. So let's just uh, uh, introduce ourselves. And how about I'll call on you and just say your name and your role here. Uh, Catherine. I'm on the executive board and I'm Leahson from CAA, the Community Assembly. Community Assembly, thank you. Bree. Hello, I am a board applicant. I am also a housing and employment specialist for consistent care. Thank you for applying, Bree. Uh, Jonathan. Hey, my name is Jonathan Bingle. I'm a city councilman with the city of Spokane representing the best district, district number one. Best one. You're not here, are you, Betsy? No. <laughs> uh, Devin. Hey, everyone. Devin Biviano. I am not new to CHHS. I started last November, but I did transfer to a new role recently, and I'm the COVID program manager. So I'll be working with Laura to make sure that all of our COVID programs and funds are utilized wisely and efficiently, and I'll look forward to working with you all moving forward. Good. Wise and efficient. We like that. Kim. I'm Kim. I am the CHHS clerk, and so I also kind of help facilitate these meetings a bit and do their minutes and agendas and all that fun stuff, and I'm also very tired. Um, <laughs> and then uh, just to let you know, Jen is on a call, but she will join in as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. George. Hi, everyone. My name is George. I work with the Community Housing and Human Services Department, uh, specifically managing the Community Development Block Grant Program. Thank you, George. Tessa. Hi, everyone. My name is Tessa Gillett. I'm a program professional in the CHHS department, and I primarily work with single family rehabilitation programs. Lovely. Uh, meeting guest, would you like to introduce yourself and say hello? Or not. It's OK, at least on my uh, list of participants, it just says meeting guest. So going once, going twice. Thank you, meeting guest. Laura. Hello, um, I'm Laura O'Brien, um, and I'm the new uh, program specialist for uh, the COVID rental assistance program. So I will be working with Devin and Jen, and uh, we're just really excited to get this going here. So it's um, it's been a really exciting time for us to, to learn about CHHS and our community, and uh, we're just really excited to get that rental assistance money out there. So that's what we're working on right now. Yep, <laughs> Thank you. That's good. You want to get that happening. Nicolette. Hello, I'm Nicolette Ockeltree. I'm Councilman Bingle's legislative assistant. Yeah, look, make, makes him look really good. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> Heather. Hi, I'm Heather Page. I'm a program professional supporting the COC grant portfolio for CHHS. Thank you, Heather. Daniel. Daniel, Daniel Ramos. He's probably working on a computer somewhere. Um, Brian, you here? I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Brian Walker, Communications Manager for the NHHS Division, which includes CHHS uh, 311 and the Office of Neighborhood Services. Thank you, Brian. Uh, let's see, Adrian. Adrian Lighthouser, I am uh, finishing up the end of my second term by the end of the year, so I'm sort of the last of the board members that have been around for six years uh, as we work through this transition to the, all of you new board members so welcome and i'd say the most knowledgeable board member in the room uh barb 
Yeah, I'm Barb Lee, and I'm a brand new member tonight on for the CHSS board. Welcome, Barb, to your first meeting. Chelsea. Hello, everyone. My name is Chelsea Lowe. I am a board applicant, and I am the Homeless Outreach Coordinator at Spokane Regional Health District. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Chelsea. I am so pleased that we have so many board applicants. We we actually have enough applicants to fill our open positions. Woohoo! Gordon, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Gordon Graves. I'm the VA representative and um, just happy to still be on the board and looking forward to a future workforce development committee, committee in the making. I'm still searching for applicants and Barry, they'll be coming soon. Thanks. Good, good. It's got 11 more days. Get them in. Okay. Jerry. Hi, I'm Jerry Rathbun. I am a board member. I've been on the board for two years now. I am the uh, chair of the RFP and evaluation committee. And with that, I also serve on the executive committee. Wonderful. Thank you, Jerry. Karen, did we do Karen? No, we didn't do Karen. Karen? Did I do Karen already? She's I muted. Didn't... She's speaking, but she's oh. muted. You're muted. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I saw the camera on and uh, didn't notice the mute. I am at my first meeting and hope to get a little bit better with the technology and uh, look forward to the arrival of hybrid meetings. I think it'll be wonderful to see some of you in person and get a sense of knowing you. I'm really impressed with the quality of experience that everybody's bringing. And I think um, as I talked with Barry about before, probably my biggest uh, role here is that I'm not professionally working in the field, but I do care a lot about it. And uh, so I'm an interesting, an interested neighbor. Okay, well, you have good professional experience to back you up. Bob, I think you just popped into my list. Yes, hi. Sorry, I never got the, I still have the WebEx link, never got the new link till just a minute ago. Yeah. So we're just introducing ourselves. Okay, um, I'm Bob Hutchinson. I'm the executive director for Project ID. We work with adults with intellectual disabilities, and uh, we have a rec center, Special Olympics, and a church for this population. And I've been on the board about two years, and uh, I serve on the executive committee. And, and the reason I joined the board uh, was at one time they were looking at putting a homeless shelter next to our facility, and and at that time, um, uh, we didn't feel that very comfortable about that hell happening. But instead of just complaining about what was going on, I felt that I should be part of the solution versus part of the problem. So that's kind of why I joined the board. And I'm extremely grateful that you did because you can give us perspective on a very large and often silent and unseen uh, part of our population, those with developmental disabilities. Yeah, what a lot of people don't understand is um, actually the last census, one out of seven people in Spokane County identify themselves as part of this population. Mm -hmm. So that's over 77,000 people that are not, uh, their voices are really not being heard. Yeah, well, thank you for being a voice for them. Randy. Randy Waltman, there you go. There you go. Thanks for unmuting me. Um, Randy Waltman, I'm a board applicant and currently work at Cup of Cold Water, which is a, a nonprofit here in town that serves homeless youth and young adults. Yep. Thank you. And Kathleen. You're muted, Kathleen. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Kathleen Torella, the uh, I board member since 2017. I represent Spokane County. I am the director of Community Services, Housing and Community Development, which uh, we oversee four divisions, which includes developmental disabilities, the Spokane County Regional Behavioral Health yeah. Administrative yeah. Services yeah. Organization, which is a six county region, as well yeah. as the Counseling and Recovery Services Division, which services 
individuals directly, provides direct services, both treatment, housing, and supportive living skills, as well as the Housing and Community Development Division, which is very similar to the CHHS uh, department, only on a much sm smaller scale, but the same types of uh, projects and activities. Yeah, so Kathleen, what do you not do? You just, you do a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Kelly. Kelly. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Kelly Burnett with uh, CHHS. I am the Contracts and Business Standards Compliance Officer. I help George with the CD, CDBG um, entitlement funds. Thank you. Jan, are you with us now? No, Hello. Oh, there you are. Sorry for um, my late arrival. I'm Jen Sarcides. I am the CHHS director. I think I've gotten everybody. Is there anybody I've missed? If not, I'm impressed by the, the wealth of knowledge, experience, background that everyone brings to this. Thank you all for being here. All righty, let's get this show on the road. Um, agenda. Here's the agenda. Um, I There's nothing I want to change on it. The order looks good. And um, anybody have any comments on the agenda? Do you want to get a motion to approve? Hey, Council sorry. member being, oh, sorry. Yeah, Go ahead. Uh, Kimberly, I think was going to reference. I put in the chat, I unfortunately have another meeting at 530. And so I have to leave here by five to be able to make it up north to make it to that meeting. Um, is there any way I could be moved up a little bit? Oh, sure. Uh, let's see. So um, I, uh, Bob has to leave at 445. So can we put you, Jonathan, at, um, I don't know if this is now, uh, Adrian, let me know if this is right or wrong. I would like to put you right after uh, discussion number one, VOA Youth Shelter. That way, Bob can be here for the vote, and Jonathan, you can then be right after that. Does that work, Adrian? Okay, Adrian, Adrian that. Uh, can, I, can I get a motion to make that change in the agenda? So moved. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with uh, the shifting of the city council update to after the first part of the discussion. Uh, I'll second. This is Catherine. Whew, not controversial. Thank you. If you're in favor, say aye, raise your hand, make some kind of affirmative motion or action or sound. Uh, any opposed? Any abstention? All right, we got one that's action done. Uh, number two, public comment. Anybody who is not a member of the board who's visiting guest, uh, would any of you like to make a public comment at this point? Um, were we sent the agenda? Oh, Bree, I'm not sure you received it. Um, also, I, if, if you search CHHS board, City of Spokane, it's a, since it's a public meeting, you can find it uh, on, on the public site. Got it. I also yeah. just put a link in the chat. Oh, oh thank you. Put, put a link in the chat. Thank you. All right. Um, no, pub, no other public comment? All right. Two, right, two things down. Uh, the minutes. Um, Kim sent out the minutes for February, March, and April. I read them. They look good to me. Um, Adrian? I'm missing um, as a board member on attendance in uh, March and April. Oh, you I know. There. So sad. <laughs> I was there. I just I wanted you to be on vacation because you worked too hard. <laughs> I was a witness. <laughs> and uh, okay, so let's see. Do I do I need to do this, Adrian? Do I do we make a motion to add you to the minutes? So if we choose to do them all at once, we can approve them pen with that correction. Okay. That's one thing. Okay, so that's sort of floating out there right now. Any other corrections or changes, additions to any of the minutes? No. Okay. Just, Kim, I think they look. You did a great job. Um, yeah. Thank you. So can I get a motion to approve all three of those months minutes? 
uh, with the correction that Adrian was present for those two meetings. Ms. Bob, I so move. Thank you, Bob. This is Jerry, I'll second. Thank you, Jerry. Any discussion? No, no discussion. Okay. Uh, if you're please, uh, if you to vote aye to affirm, raise your hand, say yes, make a noise, make a sound, make it look like you're positive. Any nays? Any abstentions? All right, good. 100% again, we are just so on top of it. Board education. Uh, Catherine, I'm going to turn this over to you about the Housing Action Subcommittee. Okay, so I am uh, a liaison from the Community Assembly to the Housing Action Subcommittee, which is underneath the Spokane Housing Action Plan. Um, it's a group that's been composed of lots of different people from throughout the city. Um, a lot of people have had very little or no experience. Uh, some of us have been on meetings that have been held on housing in the city for the last, I don't know, five or six years. The subcommittee was formed with in sort of a volatile time, I think, and so there was never really a clear understanding of what it did or how it was going to function. And we've been working for about a year now, and we've actually produced, I think, some significant things. However, that has come back to haunt us. So we are in a process now of re um, looking at who we are and what we're doing. So the different, um, there are, uh, I think, four working groups underneath the HAS committee. Um, there's Preserve Housing, uh, let's do that, let me go look. Um, Equitable, equ equitable access and um, increasing housing are at least three of the committees. Those are three that reported last time. Um, we are in each working group is in the process of creating a um, uh, mission statement so that we can be clear and not feel like we're crossing boundaries. Uh, it's been kind of fuzzy as to, and, and this is true actually just about housing. There's so many different aspects that lead into people not having houses or needing to find houses. And so the there are not real clear lines between things. There's overlap in almost everything, but we're trying to um, make that much more clear, more specific to each group so that people feel like they're actually doing something different. We've also created AIMS. I am on the Preserve Affordability Housing, and we created two AIMS in the last meeting. One is to create a list of rental units, and the other is to recommend to the larger group that as a larger group, we recommend to the city council um, that they create um, an ordinance that would incur, would make landlords inform their tenants when they're about to sell the building. Uh, one of the things that's come up for us is that uh, oftentimes tenants wake up and have somebody wandering around their place and measuring for curtains and changing the sprinkler system and all of that, and they don't know who they are, and they're told they're the new owner. So it would seem reasonable to have people informed that their place is up for sale and that they would find a new owner at some point. Um, we are thinking about having a meeting as a whole group uh, to reaffirm and refresh who we are and what we're doing. Um, one of the issues that we have found is that there's, um, we often don't have staff at meetings. There's a lot of questions that people have that staff could answer. And there are a lot of other groups that we could interface with that we may not know about or don't have a direct line to. For instance, CHHS has actually no direct line to CAS except for me. Um, and I'm an informal line and I 
try and make sure that there's communication, but it was never formally established. So we're trying to correct that also, um, and that's all in process. But any questions that people have about HAS? Woohoo, to win. Thank I you. <laughs> I would just say real quick from from for especially because we have so many new members um that HAS is separate from although this is an area of overlap and an area of consideration as Catherine was talking about about how to bring things together with the affordable housing committee that serves this board um and serves the HHS department so um I, I think that sort of speaks to what she, what she was talking about some with with um where there's some confusion and possible redundancies or or possible opportunities for collaboration that we should be looking into. Yeah, one of our our working groups, the Equity, did um, a, created a a tool um, for racial equity in housing, uh, and I was able to connect them with Jerry, uh, who is on the RFP committee, which would be a a place that might use that. So hopefully there'll be some discussion there so that their work will be useful or informed by what we're doing here. So that's the kind of thing it's they're just everybody is just hanging out and they're the connections have been either obscured or not there. <laughs> so we're trying to rectify some of that. And Kevin. obviously housing is a huge issue, affordable housing, a huge sub issue. And there's a lot of people interested in it. So the more we can like be talking together, the the better we can make some progress. I'm sorry. And planning, yeah, Sarah. planning now doing an affordable housing thing. And I have no idea what they plan to do or how that's going to be connected. Catherine, this is um more basic, and I apologize if you said this, but I just need orient to be oriented to um where this group, um, like who this group serves or like what body you serve or you're advising or how were you formed or how do you get new members like what is some of the, just that basic like where'd you come from that's a good question and i can't really answer that um the housing action plan created was created out of as far as i know air um, a group of people were pulled together to do that they did that they gave it to city council who approved it um I, I have no idea who was on that committee. And because they had that, they wanted an implementation process. And so they created another committee, which is the Housing Action Subcommittee to do that. That's so as much as I know. There so is I, no. I, yeah, Jerry, some, some of this is tied to, so that that um, the Housing Action Committee. Um, so this was, 2019, because the subcommittee's formation it aligns with time that Cupid was here. Um, and, uh, so I th I think it was the administration that pulled this together um, to to get a plan uh, to get a plan, and they tried to get there was something on that original committee, something like 40 people. I mean, it was a it was a huge committee trying to uh, touch all different folks. Um, uh, and uh, I mean, I was on that initial stage, and then. I think one of the challenges that that Catherine is is, is uh, sort of talking about, and that that doesn't help to answer your question, Jerry, is that the subcommittee um, was created, as Catherine said, to help uh, identify priorities and those sorts of things to help inform the RFP process, but not necessarily vet the RFP process, but to help help shape some of that from the work that was done. At least that was the vision that that Cupid was moving towards, and then. The subcommittee has continued to work, but I'm not sure under whose direction and if it's still for that same purpose. Is that fair, yeah. Catherine? Yeah, Brian McClatchy has sort of stepped in as sort of the support person um, who he's responding to. I don't know. He comes back sometimes with things done, um, completed by another group and sort of lays them out or has us give input. So it's truly hazy. I mean, there's just absolutely not a ton of clarity, and we're working to try and achieve that um, in the coming year. And because of that, I think we've had some people just not come anymore. So we've noticed an attrition of people because it's of the lack of clarity. And certainly 
the lack of of really feeling like our work would have some substance and go someplace. So we're working on that as well. And that's something that I'm really working to have happen because some good things have come out of the committee. We have some really good ideas, but it, it needs to have legs. It needs to have a real place to be seated. And so we're still trying to figure out what that looks like and how that will happen. Well, thanks both for that context. And Catherine, thanks for being that informal liaison and, and starting to help us build that clarity. <laughs> You're welcome. Kathleen? Yes, thank you. I, I just had a question. Is is the housing action plan, Catherine, that you're working on or in your group is for, is it not connected to the uh, Department of Commerce providing a grant to the city of Spokane to develop the housing action plan? I know that the city's that, all the were awarded a grant for that purpose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where the housing action plan came from, but I have no idea um how money flowed or if it did i haven't seen or heard anything about that and certainly the housing action subcommittee is sort of outside of that circle okay so, so maybe, i don't maybe know it, you know maybe jen and the city of spokane staff could you know come back with some of that information because my understanding is that every city was uh, allowed to have a grant in order to do a housing action plan, and it's very specific what was wanted and what it was supposed to do. Yeah, and um, did that for that. Yeah, and the county doesn't have one. This is just city strictly. So that's why I don't know a lot of information other than that. And we, as the county, we're looking forward to seeing the results of the housing action plan from both the city of Spokane and the city of Spokane Valley. So that's a, as much as I know. But I, I would think that there there should be more information yeah, that there is a provided. plan and it is available and it is on the city website okay great what thank happens you. after that is the next question got it thank you yeah. betsy you got a hand up yes i was just going to add um we kind of got stopped in the process because our housing policy person melissa left mm -hmm. and just so you all know we are in the process of interviewing her replacement so we actually hope to have that position filled within the next couple of weeks because that housing action subcommittee did kind of derail for lack of direction and even more so after she was gone. So I hope uh, with this new person coming on board, that committee can be reaffirmed up again with the directions going. That committee is also is gonna give us some input on all these housing dollars that started coming into the city uh some of that 1590 money and 14 1406 465 dollars that could go directly towards housing they were going to give us some input and some direction based on these subcommittees how those funds could be spent and how they should be allocated so i just say more to come so look for your new person soon and thank you george for putting the link in the chat for the housing action plan Adrian, um, thanks, uh, um, uh, Betsy. Uh, and to, to follow up, I'm curious, given that those subcommittees went, as you said, off the rails a little bit, I'm curious if there's a plan to reconsider the membership, because, for example, a lot of this is duplicate work that we have expertise in our affordable housing committee on. Mm -hmm. Not None of those members are on these subcommittees. Um, so I was just curious if there might be an opportunity for some of that experience uh, to be a part of this process. Absolutely. In fact, during the one of the interview processes today was how can we consolidate a lot of this knowledge and put it under one. Somebody should hold it to move it forward. And I think that's a challenge. Too many people are holding pieces. And so therefore it's not working well together. And I think there will be a total rebuild of that committee because a lot of people have left. There's been a lot of attrition on that. So it's some of just frustration of what they were doing and how where they were going and how far, how fast were we getting there? So I get it and interests have changed. But yes, Adrian, I will make sure that that is brought to the forefront. Uh, I'm sure along with Jen Saracides also. Thank you. Yeah, my experience on this board is one of the struggles is turnover in staff, turnover in electeds, turnover in board members. And yeah, 
And and I will second what Adrian said, the people on the Affordable Housing uh, Committee, our committee, have been there a long time and are very knowledgeable. And it's like they, they understand this wheel. There isn't a lot. You don't have to do a lot of reinventing if you tap some of those folks. So uh, anything else for Catherine? And the Housing Action Subcommittee? Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. You pointed out an area that we need to get some some work on. Thank you. Uh, next thing, discussion, VOA Youth Shelter Affordable Housing Action. Um, who would I tap for that? Would it be Jen or who knows about that? Now, I, Adrian, I know you know a lot about it, but I just thought there might be a staff person. Hi, yeah, Barry. I, Go ahead. Thanks, George. I was just going to say, um, Adrian, if you want to start on that and then I can fill in or um, you let me know how you'd like to go. Sure. Um, it, it Can someone share the briefing paper? Because I think not everybody who's here received the briefing paper. Um, so if that could. I'm that's sure Kim can do that. I'll, I'll that? share. Yeah, I'm sure Kim can do that. She can do everything. So um, for those some I know that some of you were not here uh, last last month or you're brand new to the board. Um, but for a reminder for those who were here um, last uh, excuse me last month, um, uh, this is the, the homeless youth shelter that um, uh, Volunteers of America uh, is looking to open fully, um, sits near the community, it spoke at SCC. Um, and this was an opportunity, um, if I try to remember all the pieces, this was an opportun opportunity to earn uh, commerce funding uh, that would fund uh, the ongoing operations, both currently, and if we could get it up and running in, in a certain amount of time, there was a promise that this would continue to be a piece of the budget. So what that meant was if we could um, find the property and build the building, that the services, the operations would be funded by the state as opposed to the city of Spokane or the city of Spokane Valley or the county um, doing that funding. Um, so this um, started, I believe, beginning of, of 2021 was when this process was underway. Um, and um, the, the county was able to help with the purchase of a property or the conversion uh, of a property from county uh, property to VOA. This is one of those opportunities where we are actually having a regional response. Um, this is actually a regional uh, skin in the game uh, for this particular uh, uh, shelter. Uh, it took uh, the city of Spokane promised, um, based on initial bids, uh, promised uh, to do the funding for the renovations that would um, be necessary because this is a 24-7 shelter, which means there needs to be office space and services and also needs to be things like kitchens and bathrooms and, and those sorts of things. Uh, and so that was... Um, promised earlier in 2021. Um, the decision was to go with CDBG monies, uh, figured out a way for CDBG monies to work with this, um, but that didn't happen until this fall. Uh, and that that decision and to fund um, VOA, the, the initial $750,000 with CDBG funds came before this board um, I, in like October or November, it did not go before the Affordable Housing Committee first, uh, but it did go before this board uh, and the board did approve it. Um, following that with CDBG, uh, first of all, the first person that Volunteers of America was working with was not interested in taking on a project with CDBG funds and the things that are attached to those funds. Um, and so they had to get some other uh, rebids, current bids, and it came in um, six hundred thousand dollars greater, and you can see here the the bids. They, um, as you can see, they they the contractor E was apparently just terribly off, and and, and it seemed not really interested in winning the bid by by their bid. So, so volunteers of America through the Housing Authority, as this said, it says here, um, have have been working with the you know the con the lowest bid that isn't contractor E. Um, and and they've agreed to hold um, that bid until 
or unless we uh, approved of this additional funding. So um, we talked about this last month and, and at that time, the Affordable Housing Committee had said no to that additional funding because we had lots of, ex of additional questions. Um, and we had met sort of quickly with, with limited information just a couple of days before our board meeting. Um, and so we presented that information, this board agreed that, to not move it forward and, and for the Afford Affordable Housing Committee to have, to get more input um, and maybe bring forward a, a motion uh, or an action item uh, this month. Um, so during our regularly scheduled affordable housing meeting, we had the opportunity for uh, Fawn Shot to, to to attend, uh, and and I'm sorry, I can't remember. Does it say in here? It was somebody from the housing authority who's the one who's helping with the capital uh, side of things as well. Um, who came? They came to our meeting so we could ask all of those questions. Why was the why was the funding so or why was the amount so far off? Um, what are some of the changes that have taken place? And Fawn did a really nice job helping us understand the, the full process that, that things had gone through. Um, and then she stepped away uh, so that we could vote. We had a spirited discussion um, and it was, um, there was a sense, a couple of things that were at stake. First, these commerce funds um, that would be ongoing Again, not city funding, um, and and but it requires that this that this shelter gets up and running uh, in order to have that that those ongoing um, operational funds. Um, it's we felt there were there was sentiment within the group of um, the city making uh, um, making a promise, but the delay in saying what kind of funding and those things um, that sort of put us in, in the position, as well as the reality that this went in front of the board before the Affordable Housing Committee, um, because a lot of these kinds of questions get asked in our committee all the time, like that number doesn't make sense, where did that come from? So so we also recognize that um, that, that process for various reasons also didn't get um, maybe to that true amount. Um, so. Somewhat reluctantly, uh, the Affordable Housing Committee did unanimously agree to move forward with, with the funding, uh, the additional funding, um, on the condition that we're also work, working on um, a letter to our elected officials in particular, uh, discussing our concerns with the way that this process went and that it was so far out of out of normal pro out of the normal process. Um, so uh, we recognize the value of the youth shelter, a 24-7 shelter, a shelter that's close to the community college. We realize the the um, the luck of being able to get this building in the way that and that this is a regional partnership and the benefit of the ongoing funding coming from the state versus um, being supported by the county or the city. And so determined that it would be um, worthwhile to commit those additional funds. How'd I do? <laughs> yeah. Very good. So the action before us is whether to approve, approve this recommendation to fund it. Is that right, Adrian? Yes. Yeah. Any questions on that? Anyone want to make a motion to that effect? I will so move. This is Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Any second? Well, before before you take that vote, could I just ask Barry yeah. a quick question? Sure. So I was just, and I saw this, and I understand some of the history that went behind it. I guess I'm a little concerned when I was reading this. They had talked about the amount of money, the six hundred thousand dollars plus. I was a little uncomfortable with what the plus means. Like, how big of a gap is that? That's my new go-to question right now. And really, who was ultimately responsible for the funding of this project? Does that whole weight lay on the city? Or does that kick back to BOA? If somebody just give me a little clarity on that, then I could be ready to vote on something. So the so commerce is is um, contributing uh, what one point one or one point two million dollars annually for operations. Two point seven million total for about three years. 
Yeah, with a promise that it would be ongoing in the budget. Um, yeah. um, the county and the city originally both stepped up with 750,000 uh, and VOA was around 400,000 yeah. um, for the for the buildings and, and renovations. Um, one of one of the to your question, you know, the, certainly that change in price tag was a was a big question for it. Um, a piece of it is um, the original bid did not and should have, but did not take in um, prevailing wages. So that was a significant um, issue with the with the first one, uh, the original bid, and then just the reality that the prices have gone up. Um, the delay was also um, one of the challenges because it this was originally approved, but then uh, appro approved in I guess in a promise but not in funding from the city, the county did theirs, but from the city until um, the fall when everything else was originally approved in March. So there's also a big time gap that that um, led to, to the, that some of those funding shortages. As, for, as far as the plus, maybe George could speak to that. Yeah, so I put the plus in there. Um, the, the action that was made by the housing um, uh, the affordable housing committee was to fund the project in full um, and with the understanding that there will likely be change orders and other adjustments that will be made throughout this i wanted to make sure that we were positioned in a way that allowed us to get the project to the finish line without having to keep coming back and forth to committee and board members for approval on that so um, one way we could potentially mitigate that is if there is a plus, we could brief uh, the board and the committee on what those increased costs may look like. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's okay. 600,000 uh, about two off? months ago. No. It was it was significantly less than 600 and then it went to 600. So the odds are very high that it will continue to escalate. Um, so so anyways. That that's the rationale behind the plus. So will those be CDBG funds, George? The plus that'll be the gap money to fill. Yes, that? those are the only funds that we have right now to fund this project. Okay. And I my last comment is, I know the motion was made to fund the project in full and write a letter to our electeds expressing frustration over the situation. I think some of the frust to my understanding, and I wasn't at the beginning. That there were some commitments made, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we really didn't have any idea of on the administration, on council side. Mm -hmm. And so we were just left to um, step up and fill the gap. So certainly, I guess I'll push back a little back because we were frustrated too, because we didn't know what we didn't know at the time all this was going down. So um, just a FYI, I'll receive the letter, but I want you to know we were blindsided when this all went down and we did not have all the information I think that was necessary. Yep. And to, to, to be, you know, I, we said it sort of broadly, but um, the, the committee was looking at, at a letter to the administration that would copy our other elected officials who were part of this, but it 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 was at least that was our discussion too. That it felt like there were promises that were made in certain kind of out of out of process order and some um, or typical order, and also because we haven't f firmly set up some of these processes yet, so that's a challenge too. But it um, for various reasons it seemed to not go through some of the 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 normal um, the normal opportunities to ask questions and 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 those sorts of things thank you adrian and i would say the other two things that the the affordable housing committee no, let's see if i can remember both of them but the the other things that they were concerned with was first of all recognizing that um, um, that we haven't had uh, um, an RFP for for quite some time, and we have you know we we didn't do the the one last year with with home funds, and so we also expressed um, a concern about these other kinds of um, funding opportunities that largely because of of capacity, understandable because of capacity, we've been un unable to offer, um, and also recognize the concern of. 
um, other uh, providers who haven't, because we have not had an RFP, haven't had the opportunity to vie for those those funds, right? So we that was a piece of our frustration too that we wanted that we wanted to to voice in this meeting um, and in the letter. Yeah, I, the, uh, my sense, and I, I think many of the people on the subcommittee, the committee, um, this is a really good shelter. I mean, it's been needed. It's been on the, it's been vetted. I mean, the, the need for a youth shelter, that's 18 to 24, very necessary. Um, counties all, you got money in it. VOA's got money in it. We've got money in it. It's like, wow, this is good. But then there's a lot of it that wasn't done well. And uh, I, I don't want my, my vote will be in favor of this, but that's why many of us said, hey, we want this letter. because We want to express, we don't want this to happen again this way. Um, this is a good outcome. I mean, it's a good shelter to get, but not this way. That's, that's my sense of it. Any other comment, discussion? We have a, a, a motion. We haven't seconded it yet. Any other question, comment, discussion before we move on to asking for a second? All right, then can we get a second? This is Jerry, I'll second. Thank you, Jerry. Discussion? Okay. Uh, those in favor, please raise a hand or say aye or some kind of aye. affirmative thing. Aye. aye. Okay. Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. Passes. Thank you all. Yeah, this is a good thing. And we will hopefully do it better in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan, you're up. Barry, Barry do you mind oh. if I say a few sure. words? Sure. Okay. No, of course, George. You can always right. say words. <laughs> Thanks. I, ju I just wanted to say, um, Adrian, just kind of in response, we, we want to get an RFP out very badly as well. And um, I know... We keep hearing that um, that that the board and partners and everyone else want wants an RFP out, um, and we understand that you all understand the the staffing issues that we're having. Um, yeah. But sorry, I got a dog in here with me. Um, but the I I just I think it needs to be said. I don't know that we've we've said it maybe this way, so I'm saying it now. Um, we want to as well. We want to get the money out. We want to activate. We we desperately want to do these things. It does us no good to sit on funds um, that are needed out in the community. Um, and I can come up with all sorts of excuses, but most importantly, I just want you all to know um, we want the same thing you do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to share. Thanks for that, George. And I will just again say, staff, I love you. I know you're working hard. I support you completely. Laura, thank you for being a new addition. Anybody, bring more people in. The more staff we can get in that department, the more we can get done. And those that are there now are just really just hanging on by their fingertips to get and getting doing so. They're just anyway, uh, that's uh, you get my idea. You get my excitement about we need more more staff, more more engine power in that department. Um, Jonathan. All righty. And uh, as this uh, city council update, I welcome Councilwoman Wilkerson, uh, her opinion at any time to jump on in. But here's uh, some things that we've done in the last month. Um, so the city continues to uh, negotiate a possible lease for the proposed uh, low barrier shelter um, at 4320 East Trent. Um, we are working on uh, things such as a zoning ordinance, uh, which is needed to operate an emergency shelter in an industrial zone. Um, it didn't pass city council a few weeks ago. It was removed from our agenda even this last week and will probably be coming forward to us again um, in a few weeks. 
Uh, the RFP process for that proposed shelter um, had to start over again. Um, there were some allegations of some conflicts of interest that came to the surface, and so a new RFP there is going to be um, issued in the near future. Uh, last week, we voted uh, five to two to pass a resolution recommending criteria for future low barrier shelters. Um, some things that were changed, it switched from requirements to recommendations, um, such as capping shelter space at 100 beds per acre. Um, on the parcel with the option to increase that capacity in extreme weather events, uh, dedicated space for wraparound service providers on site to help people transition out of homelessness, um, independent security assessments on site, lockable storage um, and proximity to dedicated transportation um, or proximity to and and or dedicated transportation to training sites. We also included some preferred criteria that includes the following recommendations, which would be private sleeping areas, plumbed bathrooms, showers, laundry inside the building, nutritious meals, and uh, open space um, and recreational activities. Um, we, uh, I have personally, because both the Wash Dot site and um, Trent are in my district, I have been dealing a lot with um, businesses and residents around the Wash Dot area, fielding their concerns, listening to what they have to say, um, and then also meeting with a lot of the businesses around the new proposed shelter site, um, as many people have concerns, um, and it's typically safety and security is is what most everybody is is concerned with. Um, uh, we also passed a resolution for the city to join the Federal House America initiative uh, to help provide some additional tools to tackle homelessness. Uh, this doesn't actually uh, lock us into any agreement whatsoever. It's just us basically saying we're joining into this program. Um, and it's uh, it's a partnership between uh, HUD and the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, which should hopefully give us some access to some um, technical assistance uh, for cities facing some homelessness issues. Uh, I got a couple more updates here for you. Uh, the city expects to administer that $4.4 million in one time home um, uh, ARP funds from HUD, and these are not ARPA funds. These are separate um, and the distribution of these funds is still in the early stages and will include community outreach before it goes through the RFP process and officially gets awarded. And then lastly here, the city received uh, $5,879,000 in change um, from the Department of Commerce Eviction Rent Assistance Program. Um, and this Monday, Council will vote to officially accept those funds and call for an RFP uh, to distribute those funds to the community. So far, the amount distributed to qualifying households has been um, about $5,000. So, um, uh, Councilwoman Wilkerson, feel free to jump in and, and comment on any of that or, or add, but that's what I've got for everybody. Thank you, Councilman Bigger. You did an excellent job. I have forgotten some of that stuff already. I will say on the rental assistance, I believe we are going to go with some of our contractors already instead of going out for RFP because that would delay it six more weeks. Um, the ones we've got have done a, a pretty fantastic job. So I think that's the only other comment I would add that that's the route we're going to pursue to get that money out there faster. And thank you for that Cut clarification. Bigel. Yes. Yes. And Congressman Big, I have a question because you said that the money we've spent so far was five thousand dollars. I can't believe that that is. I, it seems to me it's way more than that. So that's the average amount that's been distributed to the qualifying households is five thousand dollars. Okay, five thousand dollars per household. Okay, that's yes. different. Yeah, yeah, right. and and it's not an exact five. It's just around five thousand dollars. That's all right. I heard that as a program total, and I knew that was <laughs> not enough. Thank you. Yeah. And. And thank you, Jen, uh, for putting that in the chat that it will go out the RFP to existing mm -hmm. rental housing. Yep. Couple. Yep. Yeah, and I'll just jump in and add a little on to that as well. The RFP committee um, met today in preparation um, for those that RFP to those existing providers. So once council approves accepting that funding, staff's going to take the time to work with those existing providers. Um, RFP committee has provided them um, a list of questions that we would like to know from those providers in order to um, determine how to distribute those funds. And I applaud the RFP committee for being in I, there and getting it moving, keeping it moving. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from or about council? And I'll just say we, we applaud the RFP committee, even though it was a failed RFP for some inconsistencies. Uh, that committee did a heavy lift 
in the work they put into that for the shelter. So a big shout out to them, regardless of how it turned out. Yeah. And, and just Jonathan, for you have a youth shelter in your district too. Yeah. And just for new board members, um, the that um, what new processes were put in place. And so that particular RFP went to the continuum of care RFP committee, not the CHHS um, uh, RFP committee. Um, so uh, um, which was a first for those kinds of monies to go to the COC, um, uh, which was was part of, of the challenge, but it was a choice that was made uh, as we were trying to formalize some processes uh, last last year, so it was the first it had ha had it happened, but it was a process that was put in place by uh, by city staff. Um, so and and I think they had like six days to look through it, but that's we we <laughs> we can let them talk about. It, but I just wanted to clarify that for our um, board members. Three. So I I don't know if anybody can answer this question. Um, I've been at city council a lot. I'm invested in this uh, storyline, but um, is the COC still going to do the recommendation for the RFP or are they going to go with a different sector with that? Because I know there was a conflict of interest before or there were statements of a conflict of interest. So I didn't know, is somebody else going to do the recommendation aside from the COC board? Yes, there will be an independent group that will review the applications. Are we do we know who that is or is that public yet? Uh, no, the RFP should be out tomorrow and it lists the process for review um, and the folks that would be on that um, on that committee. I can tell you just just to have some general overview. Um, it's a pretty broad base of picking and you know trying not to make it too big, but trying to pick a, a wide variety of folks that are impacted um, as well as expertise. Um, we're also looking at doing a blind review and having um, a procurement department, um, possibly from the county, um, review it prior to kind of do those pass fail. Um, parts and then doing a blind review for those folks um, and then also have it be um, an observed review so that um, there's kind of some oversight to that process. And Jen, will all those people meet the conflict of interest or no conflict of interest requirement? So the conflict of interest policy that is related to uh, the COC is COC specific, but we do have a conflict of interest policy that's specific to CHHS. Um, I believe, so, so on that list, we do have uh, what we're calling two non-responsive providers. So we have to wait until after we get those applications back to determine that those providers um, that we think we want are non-responsive to the application. Um, and, and we would essentially do a vetting at that point, right, to make sure that um, whomever it is that we've identified um, don't have any conflict or are not part of an existing applications. And board members, I think you all got an email from Kim earlier today about the conflict of interest policy that she would like you to sign and make sure is turned in. So we don't have such hiccups uh, as we move forward. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah, mine is on my printer right over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else for uh, council update? Okay, then we'll move on to Open board positions, committee positions. Thank you, Karen and Barb. Welcome. And um, I think uh, you, don't, you don't. I think Karen. I think you are are willing to serve on the RFP evaluation committee. Is that correct? Okay. And Barb, are, have you gotten enough information yet to know whether that's something you want to or can serve on? My concern is the meeting time. Yeah. Yeah, because you you actually have a job, and I actually uh, have a job, believe it or not. So yeah. <laughs> so so just um, just uh, you you with uh, talk to Jer uh, Jerry and just see if that can work out, and then you guys let us know whether we should appoint you or not. And yeah, just make make sh make sure you get all your questions answered. You know what you're getting into, and when the time commitments are, and if that could be of service for that, great. Uh, if not, we'll look for you maybe at affordable housing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, that's absolutely right. Um, and there are now our bylaws say that we are a board of 12. And right now we have four, eight, I believe. And so we have four open positions. And I think at the moment we have five applicants and I think some more will be coming in. Uh, I'm just gonna throw out here this idea. I don't think our uh, bylaws prohibit us from going to 13, 14 or 15. So I'm, I'm just sort of throwing that out there and asking that question. If we get uh, some really great applicants and we want to go above 12, um, Adrian, you are, have a lot of collective knowledge in this. And I mean, I, mean it's, and I can research it some more to see, but I just want to kind of be prepared for that if we have uh, applicants that we don't want to turn away and we don't want to stop at 12. Any thought, Adrian? Uh, my curiosity would be about um, if the bylaws are reflecting what's in the ordinance. I think the ordinance, yes, they do. So well, we might be constricted by the ordinance. I, I, I read both and uh, neither of them put a cap at 12. I think I'm pretty sure I'll go back and look again. But the way I, I did read both of those and the way what I interpreted from both of those was it says um, 12, but no cap. It doesn't even say a mandatory 12 because we've been below 12 in the past. So um, anyway, just I'm just putting that seed out there for further uh, thought as we move forward. Yeah, okay. and I, I mean, I think I think just finding out if we would have to do a process before we extended that invitation, like if we would need to change our by amend our bylaws or something like that. Um, so we might check with legal on that. Yeah. Okay. Good. I will. I will get on that since I'm the one thinking about it, and I'm the one so far reading the applications, and I'm very impressed by all the applicants. And I, I the moment I can't think of which of the five that have applied we would not want to have on the board. So, uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, director's report. Staff there, over to you. Oh, something so, else. Yeah, this is Jerry. Before we move on, do we need to actually officially um, vote to appoint Karen as a committee member for RFP committee. What do you say, Adrian? Uh, we should confirm. I didn't know if we already had confirmed. I can't remember either, to be honest. Karen, are you? Yeah, already I don't think so either. I had the same question, so. So I we think should just, we'll just, so just amend the uh, committee to include Karen. We can make a motion and approve it just to cover our bases. Yes, because last time I believe we only ended up confirming the committees as were and not okay. adding new yeah. members. Yes, as right. they were standing. So, Jerry, you want to give a motion? Yeah, <clears throat> I move to include Karen as an RFP committee member. Also, we need to include Fran as a committee member. She's not listed, and she is a she is a committee member. Okay. So the motion is to add Karen and a comment to correct it to keep to put Fran on the list as she already is. Any seconds? I'll second. This is Adrian. Thank you. Discussion. Uh, those in favor, say aye, wave a hand, some kind of affirmative gesture. Aye. Any opposed? Abstention? Passes. Karen, you're official. All right. Anything else before Thank I Thank you. On? I have a procedural question. Um, yeah. And perhaps I should abstain from that vote since it concerns me. I don't know, but if I should, then no, it doesn't matter. Okay, then I vote for myself. <laughs> Yes, you can. we'll let you vote for yourself. Uh, anything else before we move it's on? It's good to know you would vote for yourself to be on the committee. So <laughs> we like people have a good self-image here. Yeah. Um, okay, director's report, staff overview, or any? Yeah, there you go, Jen. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. It looks like um, first up is staff overview. So um, I think many of you know that we hired Laura O'Brien, um, who's on this call as our COVID-19 program specialist, um, filling in for Kelsey Martin, who left, gosh, back in February. Um, and then we have Devin Viviano, um, who was a CHHS program professional is, and has moved into the COVID-19 program manager role. Um, so our COVID um, 
group is fully staffed now. Uh, it did leave us uh, a hole, um, another hole in our, um, our uh, human services as a program professional. Um, there is a posting out right now for program professionals. So if you know of anybody who wants to apply, it closes May 9th. Um, so please forward anyone you would like to um, have apply for that to that uh, posting. And um, I did actually just on Friday or Thursday, I made a, an offer to um, someone for the uh, human services program manager role. And shortly before this call, um, I received the call that she accepted. So Woo! I'm very excited about that. Um, and so uh, we are, we have a, one more staff person that will be added. Um, her st uh, start date, um, is probably not going to be till June 20th, so it's a little ways out there, but we um, have relief coming. Um, we also will be posting for the senior program manager, which is an exempt position, um, and the uh, uh, the attorney assistant, which was uh, a position that we took when the grants analysts all went to the grants pillar, um, is closed and I believe it's with the first group that's managing or that's kind of going through the list. So we should get that here shortly. Um, so that is my staffing update. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, uh, great. So next up is the new ERA grant. And we did discuss this a little bit um, earlier, but um, we do have the new ERA grant. Um, we had a little um, issue where it was not unfortunately submitted to council um, this last Monday. It is on council agenda to be uh, accepted um, next Monday. Um, and then obviously the RFP committee um, had a meeting today and um, the COVID team will be working with those existing uh, providers to get their kind of applications for this process. And then we'll, we'll go through that RFP process and then do the allocations for that. Um, what, I think once we have gone through that, we'll have a better idea of when we can open reopen that portal. Um, I am concerned just so you know that it is a small, you know, it, it's not a small amount. It's, it's a fairly large amount, but um, the, the, how fast those dollars have gone out. Um, I don't know how long they'll last, um, but hopefully it will get us through maybe this summer. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Um, the new shelter, we did just talk about this a little bit um, as well. The RFP is going to be posted tomorrow. Um, and there's been a couple changes made to it where we are um, splitting it up where you can apply to be just the shelter operator and just the shelter pro uh, services provider. You can also apply for both of them um, just to kind of give some, some other options to see what we get. Some folks um, are really great at shelter operations, but it, maybe case management and, and you know, housing placement isn't their jam. And so we can have two people that really have, um, or two groups um, that could support that. So that is where we're at with that. Any questions on the new shelter? Hi, um, again, so consistent care um, had originally been on an MOU um, with a provider. We had decided to kind of explore our options. So I just wanted to understand, um, we could put in our own RFP to be a housing case managers and employment specialists, not, not on an MOU, just our own RFP. Yes, okay. yeah. So essentially you would be committing um, to providing case management and housing um, placement support for um, any guest that's staying at that shelter. Okay, cool. All right, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? I feel like this is the least number of questions I've ever gotten. Okay. Um, point in time count. Uh, point in time count is going to be submitted to HUD this Friday. Um, and I expect that we'll have um, a press release going out, um, I think, early next week, like maybe Monday. Um, so we should have that those numbers finalized. Um, I know it seems like an easy thing, like, well, you counted them, aren't you ready to share the numbers? But there's a lot that goes into making sure that the numbers are accurate, that we're not duplicating anyone. Um, and then really, um, besides just handing over the numbers and saying, okay, well, here they are, um, giving some thought and, and uh, perspective around why we think the numbers are what they are um, and kind of what's impacting our homelessness. So we're looking forward to sharing that and we can certainly do that um, at the next uh, executive meeting or the next board meeting um, 
I will for sure have them out by then. And I had a nice long conversation with Daniel a few days ago about all that goes into this. And yes, it's very complicated. And and the more time we give you and your staff to kind of put those numbers in context, the more meaning they will have rather than just raw numbers. Yes, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Barry. Anything else? Um, I just have a couple other things. We are um, shouldering a pretty heavy load of RFPs that are gonna be coming out. So we have the shelter RFP and the uh, provider RFP that should be out tomorrow. We have um, an affordable housing RFP that should be out, um, I think sometime this week, George, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we have um, the YHDP, which is the Youth Homelessness Demonstration Project, which should be going out this week. Uh, we also have some additional requests for, um, for RFPs for some ARPA funds. Um, so we're really working through those. Um, those are a bit of a lift um, as far as making sure that, that we're very clear and what the money can be used for and what we want people to tell us about how they're going to use the money. So um, definitely uh, take some time. And then we'll also be having all of our COC uh, grants um, will be kind of coming up. And we have, I think last time I checked, we had about 80 contracts that are ending that are going to need to have something done with them, whether it's a renewal or um, an amendment or what have you. So um, we are in a paperwork forest. Um, so I appreciate your patience as, as our staff time kind of gets directed toward that. So, so you're not too bored, right, Jen? You're no, there's bored. plenty of there's plenty of work. <laughs> okay. I uh, I was out. Uh, my daughter was at a cheer competition, and um, it took me uh, an hour and a half to get through um, like two days worth of emails. So um, yeah. it was definitely it was it's there's there's a lot going on, but we're, <laughs> we're all glad to be here. Oh, good. You you keep a smiling face on there. Thank <laughs> you, Jen. I appreciate that. I I'm just glad you're still sitting there. Please stay there. <laughs> Anything else uh, from for the director before we move on? Uh, I don't believe I have anything else at this time. Okay. Any questions, comments from the, the gallery? Yeah, I've got a quick question, Barry. Um, going back to the, the new ERAP2 funds, um, I just want to clarify the process for this. Um, so the RF, uh, RFP committee will make recommendations on how those funds should be allocated, but then this full board needs to approve that. Is that that's correct, right? Okay. So do you think that we will be able to get through this process and have that ready by by um, next month's meeting? I would think so. Um, you know, Devin, I don't know if you want to weigh in. I, I don't. I don't think it'll be too difficult to get the um, the providers to provide kind of their ask for that. Um, and then it'll just be about getting it together um, for that review. But um, Devin, I'll defer to you if you have anything else to add. No, I think I agree with that assessment, Jen. And uh, like we talked about earlier, Jerry, I think everybody's on the same page, including the providers. So um, we'll do our best, definitely. Okay, cool. And I mean, yeah, RFP committee is, um, is ready and we should have enough time to to get together um, and get that ready for next month if that's how it ends up working out, which would be yeah would be really cool. So yeah, fingers crossed. Definitely. I actually do have a question on that because of the now, you know, depending on where they're at, um, you know, like if we have the affordable housing that would go through the affordable housing committee, but with these other RFPs um, coming out. Is it something where you think it would be good for us to try to get that on the schedule in advance based on the dates that we know it's closing so that it's already baked in? Um, I just want to be con conscientious of your all time um, and make sure that we're giving enough time for review and and taking a look at all that. So um, I'm sorry, Jerry, you, you might have an answer for that. I don't, I don't mean to jump in, but <laughs> I just uh, uh, so not knowing the scope of these other RFPs, I, I'll just say it sounds like there are a lot, um, as George's comment uh, points out as well. Um, and so typically what we would do is those would we would sort of set up some some standing meetings. But um, depending on if there are four different kinds of services, it might make sense for us to set up um, some ad hoc co committees. So in the past when we've had a lot of RFPs, but they've been in pretty like some different areas of kinds of services. Um, the RFP committee 
uh, will create like three subcommittees. Like mm -hmm. in a, an example, there might have been one on workforce development, and there might have been you know one that was more around food security or something like that. And and then populate it with RFP committee members, but also board members and other um, folks that are non-conflicted have joined those committees uh, to help it not be such a heavy lift for the RFP committee. Okay. Yeah, and so I'd say um, just thinking ahead, like if it's possible to share what what's on, like again, I don't, as Adrian said, don't know what you guys are looking at, but so if you could share that information with the exec committee, then maybe all of us could get together and figure out um, before our next executive committee meeting um, who we might need to pull in and what kind of subcommittees we might need if and if that's the route we need to go. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll just do a, a simple spreadsheet that has the RFP, the date it's closing, and then what committee would be reviewing it because like for the YHDP, they have a separate committee, so that wouldn't be going through this group. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. Uh, so that we can review and make sure that uh, we have enough time and, and we have the resources to review all of those. Thank you. Anything else? This is good stuff. Get it all get it lined up and as efficiently and quickly as we can get them approved and money out the door. OK, uh, committee updates. Affordable housing. Uh, so I, I don't know if we have an update. George, are we, are we, do we have something that we're meeting for this month? Uh, nothing that I can think of right now. So no update. Thank you, Adrian, for that insightful update. <laughs> Jerry? Um, I have no further updates than what we've been working on with the, the ERAP2 funding. Um, but so given that I'm just one if board member, if any board members or um, or board applicants have questions about it, I don't know how clear a lot of this was. I'm happy to to provide some clarity if needed. And just um, uh, Kim, when when we when I gavel the meeting close, can you just leave it on for a while? Because I, there may be some sort of off off. Um, Whatever questions and discussions from new people and people applying that I can just help with as long as you're all right here. So just a reminder, we have to make sure that we don't have quorum. Oh, right, no quorum. <laughs> right. So some but of you, you might not get to just stay. a quorum discussion with folks. Right. Some of you might not get to stay. So um, let's see announcements. Don't forget your Public Meeting Act training, your conflict of interest. I sent out an email today about uh, the uh, planned retreat in the fall, which I am fully on board to get planned and make happen. And I want it to be extremely responsive to your interests and needs. So uh, people who aren't on the board yet, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you are on the board, uh, we have a yearly retreat and um, my sense is there's just been so many things changing the last couple of years. We need to just to kind of get ourselves on the same page. So uh, between now and maybe sometime in the summer, I want to be collecting that. And then I want to find a good date after Labor Day, pretty closely after Labor Day, when a time and a date when we can get together and, and try to learn and get on the same page. So that's just a reminder for that. Any other announcements? Oh, heck, are we going to adjourn 40 minutes early? Wow. OK, I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, just since Barb and I are both on the um, meeting, uh, we had discussed by email whether an orientation session um, would be useful. And I would love that. There are some coming new people, but it sounds like that's a little down the road. And yeah. Barb may or may not be interested, but I would like to know, should we just go back to email on scheduling that? I would really appreciate it though. How about I put out a doodle? You know what a doodle is? Yeah. It's, it's a way to say, hey, I can come, I can meet this point, this point, this point. Um, I will create that and uh, I'm definitely will be part of that orientation. And would there be someone else who would like to be on that doodle to see if we can find a time for orientation? Uh, nobody else has to. I will. Oh, Adrian, you are so good. Thank you. Barry, I recommend we include Ann Wiggum on it as well. Yes, I'll, I'll ask Ann to do it. 
for Karen and Barb, Anne's a, f oh, well, and Karen, you got to meet Ann today, but um, she's a former board member and serves on our RFP committee, but um, yeah. has done a lot of the orientation in the past. I don't know if it'd be appropriate, but um, perhaps the applicants um, might be invited because it would be a heads up to them what it is about and they'd be um, prepared when, when the process does complete and uh, the new members are named. That's just a, I mean, the more the merrier in my mind. I will ask from input from Adrian, whom I rely on for everything. <laughs> well, so two things also, uh, council member Bingle needs to, we need oh, yeah. orientation as well. Um, it might not, it might not be at the same time, just recognizing tight schedules, but just to make sure we keep that in mind. Um, and I think, um, uh, I think one of the, one of the challenges with with potential board members is depending on if we're going to be able to expand the board if we have that information i would hate for somebody to who's great to to sit through an orientation and and not um not be invited on the board because we don't have the space which is a good problem to have we don't always have that problem uh, but but on the other hand we can also leave it up to the, the folks um knowing that they'll probably be asked to do another orientation once they get on the board anyway. But uh, so I would leave that up to you, Barry, what you want to, would want to do. I, I will discuss this with Adrian privately, just in case she has things that she doesn't want to say as public. But so we'll see. So that, thank you for Karen for the suggestion. Um, we got Adrian, I'll invite Anne. Anybody else want to be part of that doodle for, a, for an orientation for the new members? Oh, you lose. Okay. Well, we'll, I, leave, I we'll just, leave it at that. Did I hear somebody else? I have one thing that uh, yeah, has nothing to do with the the doodle. <laughs> um, so anybody that's still on the board, if you know somebody out there in the community that has an interest of being on the board for um, something to do with workforce development, anybody that some insightful, experienced person out there that I'm not aware of, Maybe feel free to give them my phone number and my email so I can talk to them about it and I'll put it in the chat because I'm running out of time here um, just to get some, you know, even if we could get one or two people out of there. Everybody I talked to is tied in with a nonprofit and the uh, biggest obstacle is the the obvious conflict of interest right. when they're the ones usually applying for the grants, the grant monies. If we do come up with this nice new idea toward training people and you know my biggest thing would be uh, to come up with some kind of program to help older people retrain and and um reprogram toward a new something else they can do because most of them can't do what they did all their life those are the kind of people i work with but so that's just one thing but you know it's 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 in ideas like that i think i think that it, you know if we get in a position to apply for funds or present an idea that people might be able to get on board with you know and say hey yeah it looks like a good idea is that how it happens toward uh housing projects and housing ideas and you know filling the need in the community i mean you know um so anyway i'm going to be tapping in i'm going to be going as fast as i can it's going to be tough because i've got a short window because I'll be out of town till Wednesday of next week. And you said 11 days. So um, I got tomorrow. Anyway. Thank you, Gordon. Nicolette, you got your hand up. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, sorry, because I'm in the car. Um, I just wanted to also mention that um, the equity subcommittee is still accepting applications and looking for um, other individuals to apply. So um, if you also know of anybody who would want to be on that subcommittee, um, I know they're really looking for uh, more individuals who are interested. So I wanted to throw that out there. And that is the subcommittee of what larger committee? Um, so it is. Under finance. So I know that Alex is running it, the equity officer. I assume, I guess then, I mean, maybe Betsy Wilkerson can answer this better, but then the Office of Civil Rights or just the equity. Um, <laughs> Betsy, is that right? Yes, so the, the one committee Nicholas mentioned is under finance, we are operationalizing a equity subcommittee 
to help us when we are looking at finance and policy from a community standpoint. So that was one of our goals last year. We've had nine, applic nine applicants so far. It's something brand new in the city. It's a way to get a citizens engaged on the seventh floor level. So we'll be working with council and with the administration. And they'll kind of be the first sniff test of why do we do that? Who's it going to impact? Is that the best use of our money? So it's another level of community engagement we have never had before. So if you're interested, uh, shoot me an email. I get all the information to you. Uh, and Council Member Wilkerson, is there yes. a um, is there like a request for applicants that we can find somewhere and a conflict of interest um, policy for this I, that we can reference? So Jerry, this is just a there will not be a conflict of interest policy because this will be an advisory group. Cool. Um, helping us get out of our own echo chamber. And let me see exactly where I could get, shoot you that information about the application process. So perfect. I think I know that, but that's what a good staff person does. <laughs> Councilmember Wilkerson, this is Adrian. I'd, I'd like yes. to that application information as okay, well. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, Nicolette, for that. Anything else? I would say one more thing Adrian. real quick. Um, are we moving to hybrid? with encouraging folks who are comfortable that's right <laughs> yes uh that that is correct right kim we have the the room reserved and we're going to be hybrid next month is that right kim yes it'll be in the lower level of city hall in the city council briefing center okay so you have the option of in person or hybrid i plan to be there in person just because i think i can be a better chair there that way especially when i, I figure out how to do all this so for those who haven't been there before, you go into, there's a security check and you'll explain that you're going to the CHHS board meeting downstairs. Um, you'll want to arrive a little bit early because you will need to find parking uh, if, if you do come in. So keep in mind, unless you, unless you use public transit or walk, that you will need to um, find parking. Thank you, Adrian. Anything else? No? Okay. Then hey, meeting's done. Let's see if we can get rid of enough uh, uh, board members. So, and, and I may be wrong. Maybe like the, the new members and the applicants may not have any questions. And I'll just be here and nobody will want to talk to me. So that's perfectly fine. Well, Barry, officially dismiss us, will you? We're dismissed. Thank you. Good. And I'll say goodbye too. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye, everybody. So let me just see who. Bye, thanks, everyone. Here. So Gordon, he said, "Oh, you're Gordon. You're still here." Um, okay, we do not have a quorum. We're we're out of quorum. So anybody that's still around, I don't know. Questions, comments, discussions, anything you want? Uh. I just to backtrack a little bit on you were talking about the um, retreat mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. as well as you know I know you put out a uh, email about um, doing this uh, this weekend and it's um, I guess I don't know if if everything is real kind of fly by night <laughs> I mean it seems like it's like uh, let's do this and it's an hour yeah. later and it's like yeah. my schedule just doesn't work like that <laughs> yeah, you are at th that. That is not the way we're not when I joined and it was pre COVID. It's, it's tough to give you tell you about my experience. I joined pre COVID and we had a full staff and there were set dates and it was very organized and man, we would have meetings and we the staff members would just fill us in and yeah, uh, then COVID hit and everything kind of went crazy. Um, lost a lot of staff and um yeah it's it's will it be how will it be going forward barb i don't know um but uh yeah i, I sense the frustration about especially with rfps is it, it it may until i think there's the department gets fully staffed up which might be a while and we get down into a some a pattern 
uh, there might be kind of like, oh, we need you next week, we need you tomorrow, we need you this. So now my attempt on doing the doodle, I'll get, I'll put out dates like two, three weeks ahead and we'll be able to schedule that and so. Well, and Jerry did a couple doodles, but it, it was, uh, and when I asked her what days the meeting is, it was like, there are no, there are no assigned dates. There, <laughs> there used to be a regular set monthly RFP evaluation. Same thing for uh, affordable housing. There was, and I had it on my calendar set. And if we didn't have any business, it was canceled. And if we had business, we met at that, at that set time. That's the way it was. Uh, going forward, I don't know how it'll be going forward. I just, I just, I guess, I just feel bad that it's hard for me to engage in things if mm -hmm. I don't know when they're going to happen. What I suggest, <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. And and I'd suggest maybe you let Jerry. Do, do you have a, a set work schedule, a time when you're working? So like, you know, when you're, you're, I'm not available these days, these hours. Yeah, and fortunately, it's actually going to change. I'm going to start having, um, I'm cutting back to four days a week, which will uh -huh. give me some flexibility. But still, I usually kind of need to know yeah. stuff a little well, bit ahead of time, just because well, that's my yeah. life. Most people do. So no, it's not an unreasonable expectation. Okay. And, and you're popping it at a time when there's just a lot of stuff flying. So no. Okay. And can I say it will it will settle down and be different going forward? I certainly hope so, uh, and I think it will. Okay, uh, I just didn't know if maybe this required more flexibility than I had. <laughs> what you're experiencing is not what typically has been the the pattern. No, okay. but I have learned over at least my over my two years that the patterns come and go. So, no, no. Cam, you got your hand up. Um, I would just like to add to that right now, please don't judge us too harshly. We do have a lot going on and we will until probably the end of July, maybe beginning of August, once fall hits and things start to kind of calm down and hopefully we have more staff like Barry was saying, then we'll be able to start getting back on track as far as like having things planned out in advance and not kind of just reacting to everything. We'll be able to be more proactive and hopefully that'll help with all of the RFP committee stuff and all of that. Uh, but also there will be occasional times when we do have to have an emergency like committee sure. looking at something that needs to be done right away. So, but it should get better. I, it really I, should. And yeah. honestly, I wasn't judging you guys. I was just worried that my, that I did not have the flexibility you needed. Oh no, you're fine. You're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang in there. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be all right. We'll, we'll we'll get we'll get more planful and okay. <laughs> plan we, we will do that. We we understand that is a, a standard that should be met. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Questions, comments, interests? Well, I kind of wanted to know. Um, I guess kind of a baseline, like where does our money come from? How much money do we kind of? I mean. It sounds like monies are coming into us and I don't understand where they're coming from and I don't understand how much. Mm -hmm. So like when they're talking about giving away 600,000 to VOA, it's like, well, how much do we have? Right. Or, and how much will we have? Is right. that almost all of our money or is that almost none of our money? Great question. And a staff member like George would be able to, to really zero in and answer that question. Um, here's my understanding from two years of being on the board, which is not deep, I am coming to find. But the way I explain it is that there's money out there in the world, a lot of federal dollars through various programs with various requirements. There are state dollars, various funds, various requirements. Uh, and then the city actually has its own dollars. And much of what we do is we're, and the, when those dollars from federal and state, and when the city's thinking of spending their own money, uh, the, the, the federal and state are required by their, most of, the, most of their funding requires a citizen advisory board like us. So we can't get those federal and state dollars uh, in this community 
uh, and the city can't get access to them and unless we exist and we are consulted and we give recommendations. So I think the biggest chunk of the money we're talking about here today and most of the time are those kind of dollars. Um, now, we are just advisory. We don't make decisions. We advise the council and the mayor. Um, so what we advise isn't necessarily going to happen, but unless we exist and give advice, those dollars are not going to flow through the city to these various places. Um, and the city dollars often just for be, to be politically correct, uh, the mayor and the city council don't want to just do it on their own. They want to run it through people. They want to run it through a citizen advisory committee like, yo, the CHHS board listened to this and they support it. So, so uh, I, that, that's, and yes, that, there are people in the department who know how many dollars we have and they know what they're approved for and where they can go for and like the, uh, the, the requirements to get them. And that gets really detailed. Does that answer your question? It does. I guess I, I was wondering though, so we never at any time know whether that 600,000 actually exists? Oh, it does, yes. That that part of the, uh, the meeting that we had um, that Adrian was describing, it does exist. We have, um, oh, I think we have got another, five, I'm guessing approximately, once we spend this money, which we've approved, and if the city council approves it and spends it, we still have, I think, around 500,000 in CDBG dollars. That's, you know, it's one bucket of federal money that can go to certain places under certain requirements. So we do have more dollars. And that was part of the, the committee saying, well, if we put all this money here to this youth shelter, you know, we're, there's other entities that might want these dollars and might need these dollars. So are we are we making a good choice here to put them here and and not, you know, let other uh, entities apply for them and do good stuff with that money? And that was an important consideration of ours. Uh, and sometimes I've, I've been in some of these meetings where we say no, uh, there's sometimes we have five applicants for five hundred thousand. And no, nope, you three don't get any of it. You two can split this because we, you know, we're, we've got a limited number of federal dollars flowing through this particular pipeline. And we decide, you know, what, where to prioritize and whether to give this away now and save it or, yeah. So did I miss that when? Did yeah, you weren't say? at that meeting. You okay. weren't at that meeting. It was uh, like, but it was at a CHSS board meeting. It was, the, no, it was a CHS committee meeting. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, it was a. It was yes. I'm pretty sure it was. I've been in various meetings. It was the the CHHS affordable yes affordable housing committee meeting, which includes board members and non board members. You know, community folks who who have expertise in in the field. And 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 we listened to all the detail. Like what you're asking, we. We grilled Fawn Schott and we grilled the housing guy and they came up with all the numbers and we grilled the city people like how many more dollars are out there. And so so we had a lot of information when we came to our recommendation and, and normally that happened. That's what happens. So normally we would be a part of that or the whoever if, if you are on the affordable housing committee as a board member, you would have been part of that discussion. If you're not on that committee, then I and Adrienne and at the moment Gordon, we would be on that here and then bring it to like today's meeting. Okay, so if I had asked that today, that wouldn't have been a weird question. Like how much oh, money no. do we have? Okay. No, it would not have been a weird <laughs> question at all. We, we asked those questions uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. And, and that's the part, and part of the frustration of that particular funding for the youth shelter is that step was skipped six months ago. That for, for for whatever reason, and we don't we don't we think it was poorly planned by somebody to go directly to the board with this request and avoid or I don't know I don't know if it was avoid, but it didn't go through that that smaller committee that really asked a lot of the nitty picky dollar kind of questions, uh, and that's part of our 
frustration. And we said, why didn't this happen? So we're hoping they won't go that way again. Thank you. Bree? <clears throat> yeah, so I was curious, and you might have an answer and you might not. Um, do you know anything about the American Rescue Plan dollars? I know there was, I was told, there was $200 million allocated for that, but I don't know if that's a one-time deal, if that was set aside for one thing, or if part of that was paying for the young adult shelter. Uh, none of that money is going to the young adult shelter. That's that 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 is done. I mean, maybe going forward, some of it might be spun off. But I think I'm not sure that 200 million is just um, that's that that's part of the RFPs. I think that uh, Jen Saracidis was talking about. I think there's going to be a lot of those for that big pocket of money. There's going to be a lot of those like RFPs going out for it. Right, yeah, because my understanding, I know a lot of the providers right now, some that have put in RFPs or the original RFP folks or um, different nonprofits in the area were concerned because that was set to expire at some point. Mm. Um, so then it kind of leaves the question, what is the funding source for the East Trap property at that point? <laughs> I... Don't know the answer. I, yeah, that's there's a lot of questions about the East Rent property. <laughs> many, many, many questions. Fair. Well, and we'll kind of, you know, I'll see you in the morning and dive in on that too. So <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, ask that question, but write it on one of the three by five cards. We're Perfect. talking about the uh, Homeless Coalition, and uh, Bree, I'm, I'm one of the leadership teams on that, and that's tomorrow morning. Chelsea, are you going to be at that? Yes, I will. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Mm hmm I am, am happy to be able to attend in person. Because last time I got sick the day before oh. and was supposed to present. And then I was like, probably doesn't look great if someone from the health district is showing up to an in-person meeting sick <laughs> during a pandemic. So I'm excited to be able to go in person. It should be... It should be a good Interesting. <laughs> yeah. We've got the mayor, Ben Stuckert, and Lori Kinnear, and three homeless outreach workers on a panel. Who knows I what's going to happen with that? I am so glad to hear that there are outreach workers being included in that panel. That made me so happy to see um, just that I just feel like the <laughs> – more bottom up inclusivity is just going to be so beneficial and it's something that it it sh I feel like it's something that should be kind of a norm um in my humble direct service mind mm -hmm. opinion <laughs> so mm -hmm. cuz doing that work is it brings perspective that just other people just might not have based off experience, which is fine. That's why varying experiences are really important to be contributing at the table. So mm -hmm. excited for that. I did have a question. Mm -hmm. My question, because you, you did mention about how um, the CHHS department um, does refer to the board as far as for um, like conversations on different decisions that are being made. Um, mm -hmm. What in in the event that the board is in opposition of something presented, is there a specific process that's gone through if that does happen just in general for any type of proposal that's being brought well, up? Yeah, well, I, I guess the best way I can answer that is there many things come to us and not all of them are, do we recommend going forward with them? Right. And, and um, then, so they just take your recommendations but, into consideration we, or? Yes, we are okay. just, we are just a recommending body. That is yeah. all. It yeah, is, that's what I Our thought. humble position is that of recommender. Is are those recommendations um, like documented? Oh yeah, we okay. have we have uh, minutes. We have the agenda. Um, it's a public meeting. Um, the we have council people present. I mean, it's it's the their staff. I mean, 
it's known what, what our position is. Now, my experience from my two years and from people who've been on it before that is uh, we are nor what we recommend is normally followed. It's highly, I, I, I don't remember, I don't remember anything that is on my term of two years that was recommended that wasn't followed. And I think there's others from previous years who had the same experience that, uh, uh, yeah, we're usually we're we're on the wavelength of what gets done. Awesome, thanks. And now, has, there's things that don't go through us, so we we don't get yeah. certain questions asked of us. But yeah, has so have they ever rejected your suggestions? Like the city, have they ever just threw it out? Nothing. The board. Well. Um, I think the safest answer I can give is no, there's nothing they've rejected. Maybe if we're just talking privately sometime, Bree, or any of you privately, I might give you more information, but I, I, I would be kind of going out a little bit of a limb if I give a full answer to that. Because there's, politi there's political stuff at work all the time. But in terms of the, the, the general work of this board and the, our recommendations, they no, we we're we're generally followed and approved. I hope your meeting tomorrow is very good. I'm assuming that is not a public meeting. It is. It is. How does the public attend? Is it on the city site or? Let me tell you, the um, Spokane Homeless Coalition has existed for about thirty years. It is it. It is not a nonprofit. It is not a legal entity. It is simply a coalition. Folks who have gotten together for 30 years, probably Bob Peeler, who's been around forever since dirt was invented, was one of the first <laughs> ones to start going to it. Yeah, Chelsea knows Bob Peeler. Um, they just, you know, people work with homeless about 30 years ago said, let's get together and try to, hey, let's see if we can do things better. And it's just basically been that. That's it. Um, it, it's churches, it's service providers, it's uh, it's government people, it is it's anybody and everybody who has an interest in homeless. Um, basically, as far as far back as I can remember, for a couple of decades, the group gathers once a month um, for I don't know, I'm not sure how long we've had a list serve, uh, which there's 1,300 people on it. I'm the one that sort of moderates it these days. If you want to be on it, I can put you on it. And there's daily I would love that. emails flowing through there about uh, anything and everything dealing with homelessness, like, hey, I need a stroller for a homeless family. I need a car seat for a homeless family. Hey, uh, I've got a, a mother and daughter who's you know, being kicked out. I mean, it's there's a, a one of the best things of that listserv is all these people can say, hey, I've got a problem. Do you have an answer? And within seconds, well, maybe minutes, you get an answer. So it's, it's a highly effective communication tool and connecting tool, that listserv. And then once a month, we get together in person or during COVID, we got together in Zoom. And the leadership team, of which I am on it, and yeah, I stepped forward and nobody else did. So that's how I got on it. No great pat on back for me, but I just said, sure, I'll do this. Uh, once a month, we get together and say, hey, what? What do you? Th what do we think our our people would like to hear about this next month meeting? And we we happened to have Nadine wanted to come, and um, I think we thought, well, let's get Ben and, and oh, and Lori Kinnear was already on our agenda for that day, so we thought, let's get Ben in here, and we we just kind of decided that would be an interesting thing. We have various people presenters topics each month, um, and it's open to anybody. There's, there's, <laughs> it is as open as you can get. It's, it's at the Gathering House uh, in the Garland District, and uh, it's nine, nine thirty, the first Thursday of every month, nine thirty to ten thirty. You're welcome. Any, anyone can wander in there and, and, watch. <laughs> so is it not going to be virtual anymore? I mean, I, I know I saw some. It'll be live. Well, meetings. yeah. We're going to live stream it. Uh, okay. We have, we have. We have secured a tech person who knows what they're doing, and <laughs> and, uh, and actually the gathering house is paying that person um, to show up, and uh, so they basically their sub the gathering house is subsidizing the live stream, so you can you can watch on YouTube or you can show up in person. 
And that's going forward as long as Gathering House pays that person, we'll be able to keep live streaming. Bree, you got a hand up. Oh, yeah. I'm just super excited for tomorrow. Um, so have you, I know that the providers haven't been named. Is that something, is that intentional that it hasn't been public or? Um, Which the provider? providers that are on the panel? Oh, no, because people keep coming and going and coming and going. Bree. <laughs> I'm I'm going to be there with big are you, are you going to be on the panel? The panel? Yeah, I, the panel was always going to be a thing. Yeah, the panel oh, okay, leadership. Oh, good. Yes. Well, the reason I didn't put the names out. Okay, so yes, you I think you are the only definite one. I think we might oh. get Bob Peeler, uh we might get Heather Schley, we might I mean Robert Lipman is the person uh securing the That's the okay. outreach and he has not given me definite names to put out in the email, so I'm not sure who oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, now I remember you. You are the for sure one yeah. person on that panel. Well, an exciting part was I was reached out to because I am not only am a provider, but I have lived experience. Right. Uh, I've been out of homelessness since 2020. Um, so kind of the fresh perspective and being able to, I met the mayor when I was still homeless, ironically. Um, mm. so this is going to be really interesting to kind of come back and go, Hey, I'm housed and well, here's my perspective. <laughs> yeah, will she remember you? Probably not. I had neon blue hair and I oh. was not, <laughs> I looked well, that, different. That, that, you, you, <laughs> I think you should offer that, you know, that little vignette when you when you have a chance to speak. Just say, you know, Mayor, we met when I was homeless, and yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be good. I have a lot of questions prepared. I got a lot of different perspectives from a lot of different providers because um, I think now more than ever, we really need to unify as providers and mm -hmm. and bring all of our opinions to the table and truly unify. Yeah. <laughs> And so, not just right. We need we need a lot of a lot of unifying. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of a lot of constituencies and folks out there. And if we could just yeah, make I think if we were just to lock them in a room and say you can't get out until you come up with something, that <laughs> that might get it done. Right. Well, and I think it's it, you know um, that's me personally i am thrilled that the mayor is willing to have a seat at the table and talk mm -hmm. to people and and listen and um i think that's it's well overdue but it's excellent that it's happening now especially cuz we're right on the edge of a public health crisis yeah. if not there <laughs> that the coalition about 6 months ago so this is a a return in turn in uh, engagement at the coalition meeting Correct. Yeah, it, the draft portion of it, um, new, I, I believe her her draft. I, I've started to kind of skim through it. So um, there's a lot in it. Yeah. Well, my understanding now that I've talked to the providers that were listed in the draft was actually they had um, taken all of the concerned emails from providers and combined it into a draft. Mm -hmm. it, I, none of the providers, I think, sat in on the conversation. They just took all the emails and letters and yeah. suggestions. I, I am going to ask clarification, but yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you for hanging I around. I would love to be added to that listserv you mentioned. If you'll all right. do that for me. I will add you. Add Karen. Yeah, very good. I like and just being on there for situational awareness. It's kind of nice. Yeah, you'll 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 kind of get a pulse of what's going on out there. Yeah, or I'll be like, I thought I knew about tons of resources, but I did not know about that. Putting that in my little memory bank. So it's really good to yeah, just be able to be like kind of keep a pulse on just different things happening in the city and what providers are working on and stuff. Yeah, and I don't know if you heard me, Barry, but would you add me too, please? Sure. I will do that. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, well, thanks for doing this. Thank you for your interest and your presence and for you being on the board and applying to be on the board.
And I think we're done. So Kim, you can, we will sign off. And uh, Kim has probably been listening into our conversation. <laughs> Kim, thank you for your support. Or she's I gone home. I, I was actually doing homework. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Did I not? Crap, there we go.